may Allah's blessing be upon his Prophet Muhammad. Mr. Yahya bin Saeed al Ghahtani, Mrs. Saad al Mansur, the Assistant to the General Director for Education for Educational Affairs. Excellencies, respected scholars, dear guests, it's my pleasure and honor to welcome you today for this conference dedicated to the 21st century skills for learning English. Governments from around the world have worked together to understand the essential skills that students will need to succeed in the 21st century. These skills include collaborative learning, critical thinking, creativity, problem solving, self-direction as well as technology. As you all know, technology is changing our world. Routine knowledge and skills are being automated, digitized, and outsourced. The Saudi National Anthem. Distinguished guests, let's first listen to some verses from the Holy Quran recited by the student Khaled Baber from Imam Warsh for memorizing the Holy Quran. A'udhu <laughs> Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لأول الألباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار ربنا إنك ما تدخل النار فقد أخزيته وما للظالمين من أنصار ربنا إننا سمعنا مناديا ينادي للإيمان أن آمنوا أن آمنوا بربكم فآمنا ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تخزنا ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميعاد Honored guests, it's time for the welcome speech presented by Mr. Saleh al garni the head of English language department in Jeddah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Mr. Yahya al-Gahtani, uh, Mrs. Saad al-Mansour, Assistant of the General Director of Education for Educational Affairs, Excellences, Honor Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, on behalf of the General Director 
of Education in Jeddah, Mr. Abdullah bin Ahmed al Thaqafi, I am very pleased to welcome you all to the ninth HELD conference. I would like to thank Mr. Abdurrahman Preh, the head of the English language department in the Ministry of Education, for giving us the opportunity to host such a wonderful event. I would like also to thank the official sponsor of HELD, Tatweer for Educational Services, for their great support. I also would like to thank the UBT Academy for sponsoring the English language department, boys and girls, in this event. I'd like to express my appreciation and thank to my colleagues, supervisors of English language department, boys and girls, for their outstanding efforts for preparing for this event. I'd like to express my sincere and appreciation to our dear teachers and students for their active participation in this event. Finally, we welcome you all in Jeddah and wish you a happy stay. Thank you very much. Dear guests, it's time now for the opening speech delivered by Mr. Abdurrahman al Freh, the head of English Language Department in the Ministry of Education. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is a, has been a wonderful day. This is something that it's a teamwork. We have been working for so many months on this. The ninth held conference, Heads of English Language Department Conference, comes after eight previous conferences. And after each one, if you look at the recommendations, there were so many projects that came out from these meetings. So these meetings in general and this conference end up with programs and projects that could be applied. I would like to thank Tatweer Company for Educational Services for sponsoring this event. I would like to thank the lovely people of Jeddah for hosting this event. I would like also to thank all of you for attending Heads of English Language Departments in all areas in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I also would like to thank our dear friends, our dear partners for coming to this event for sponsoring speakers. I would like to thank Melbourne University. I would like to thank National Geographic Learning. I would like to thank EDT, Education Development Trust. I would like to thank the British Council. I also would like to thank Garment Education. I would like to thank Oxford University Press. I would like to thank also TTEC for uh, sponsoring also speakers. I would like to thank Amidist, also Cambridge Assessment English, Pearson Education, uh, Manchester Metropolitan University, our friends in the Center of English Language, uh, EF, Education First, and also Hamilton House. If you look at the schedule, there are a lot of varieties in the presentation on a very important topic, 21st century skills. We will talk a lot in the coming three days about 21st century skills. If someone know these things or they have some kind of knowledge, I sure that you will see what are the latest research in this regard. Before I finish, I would like, uh, with, with your help, we're going to launch a project that we have been working on for almost a year, and it's, it's all by you. It's the SELF, the Saudi Education Language Forum. 
It's a magazine that this is the website, selfksa.com. It's a magazine. You can look it. You can download it. If you could go to the website, please. When you go to the website, anyone who can log into Self KSA, they can see the first issue that's released in November 2018. This is the website for the self, and you can look all the information for the first issue. You can download it and browse it at any time. And because it's the first issue, we are now giving you a printed copy of the self magazine. The self magazine or the self newsletter is something that we would like to publish three or four times a year. And this all depends on you with your support and help. And we will talk later more about the self. Thank you very much for coming. And I hope that you enjoy this conference. Thank you very much. Education in Saudi Arabia started in Al Qutab, a traditional Islamic academy primarily used to teach children. The main aim of Al Qutab is to help students recite and memorize passages from the Quran and learn reading, writing, Arabic grammar, and poetry as well. In 1925, Saudi Arabia established the Directorate of Education, which was merely for boys and initially started with only four schools then increased to 323. As the country expanded, the Ministry of Knowledge was established in 1951 to manage the different educational affairs in the entire country. The ministry was officially renamed as the Ministry of Education in 1954. Six years later, girls' education was introduced. Researchers seem to agree that the formal beginning of English was in 1928 a few years after the establishment of the Directorate of Education in 1925. The story of the introduction of English into the Saudi education system is interesting to tell as it has various development stages over the past 90 years. In fact, the great expansion of oil industry crystallized for the government the importance of developing a foreign language program that would train the manpower to staff not only government positions, but also other positions created by America. Accordingly, the early stage of oil production increased the demand for Saudi English speakers in order to communicate with foreign interests outside the country. 1928. English was initially taught for four hours a week at the elementary stage. In 1957, English, along with French, was registered as a subject at secondary school stage and was taught for 11 hours a week. In 1959, English became a core subject with specific objectives and syllabi, and students received six periods of 45 minutes of instruction per week. Over the last 90 years, the English curriculum in Saudi Arabia underwent a number of considerable historical developments. 
In 1979, the MOE collaborated with Macmillan Press and introduced new textbooks entitled Saudi Arabia Schools English. However, these were replaced by a series entitled English for Saudi Arabia, which was designed by several EFL specialists from King Fahd University of Petroleum and Minerals. In recognition of the special status of English, the Saudi government recently introduced a number of reforms designed to raise the level of English proficiency of Saudi learners. These reforms have involved, among other things, increasing learners' exposure to English instruction as part of the Saudi educational system and modernizing the English school syllabus, the teaching methodology, and the teaching learning materials. Today, modern and international textbooks are taught in Saudi Arabia. These curricula are aimed at developing the student's use of English language skills in a communicative way. Apart from that, they also broaden the student's intercultural awareness, which does not only enable them to understand their own culture better, but also the other cultures around the world. The new series also improves and integrates all the language skills through a variety of communicative tasks, which develop the student's way of thinking and enhance their language ability. Excellencies, respected scholars, dear guests, let's now listen to Dr. Muhammad Sayed, General Manager of Content, of Content and Standards, Tatwir for Education. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Asad Allah sabahakum kul khair. واسمحوا لي حقيقة نخرج شوي عن التقليدية حقيقة ما أحب البروتوكول بشكل كبير جدا ولكن حقيقة حتى نوصل لرسالة شركة تطوير الخدمات التعليمية اليوم إحنا حقيقة سعيدين بهذا الملتقى وبهذه الحضور الكبير جدا وشكر كبير جدا لإدارة التعليم بمدينة جدة وعلى رأسهم حقيقة مدير عام التعليم وكذلك مساعد مدير عام التعليم الأستاذ يحيى القحطاني كذلك الشكر للأخوة الزملاء في وزارة التعليم وعلى رأسهم الأستاذ عبد الرحمن الفريح على هذه التظاهرة الحقيقة التي نسعى دائما في شركة تطوير بالشراكة معها ودعمها هنا سؤال يتبادر دائما في ذهننا هو لماذا نحن هنا اليوم وماذا نريد ماذا نريد في ابن العاد كما تعلمون أن شركة تطوير الخدمات التعليمية منذ أن أسندت لها مهمة تطوير المناهج الدراسية وهي في عاتقها أربع أساسيات ينبغي أن تتطور فيها المناهج الدراسية أول نقطة أساسية هي حقيقة كيف تكون هذه المناهج داعمة لمهارات القرن الواحد والعشرين اثنين كيف يكون لهذه المناهج تواكب الاتجاهات العالمية الحديثة الشيء الثالث كيف تواكب مسيرة التنمية في المملكة العربية السعودية ورؤية المملكة عشرين ثلاثين الرابع هو حقيقة كيف يمكن لهذه المناهج أن يكون لها مناهج مساندة وإثرائية ولا يكون هذا المنهج هو المصدر الوحيد للمعلومة للطالب فكانت هذه الحقيقة الأعمال التي تمت خلال الفترة الماضية من شركة تطوير في تطوير المناهج الدراسية وانعكست على الميدان التربوي بأفكار جديدة وأفكار محورية لتطوير هذه المناهج اللغة الإنجليزية هي أحد هذه الأفكار التي تؤمن شركة تطوير الخدمات التعليمية بالتعاون مع الجهات ذات العلاقة سواء في وزارة التعليم أو مركز تطوير اللغة الإنجليزية في الوزارة أو مع الشركاء في العالم بكيف يمكن نطور هذه هذه السلسلة وهذه المناهج سعيدين اليوم حقيقة بهذه التظاهرة اليوم حقيقة نتمنى من الجميع أن نخرج من خلال هذا اللقاء بتوصيات وأفكار تساعدنا في المرحلة القادمة في تطوير مناهج اللغة الإنجليزية بالتعاون مع وزارة التعليم والتعاون مع المركز تطوير اللغة الإنجليزية ومع الجهات ذات العلاقة الأيدينا دائما مفتوحة لكم 
في كل ما هو ما يمكن استيعابه في خلال الفترة القادمة سواء عن طريق تطوير الكتاب المدرسي المكتوب أو حقيقة ما يمكن دعمه من خلال منصة عين للتعليمية كل شكر والتقدير لحضوركم كل شكر والتقدير للأخوة العاملين وسواء في إدارة التعليم جدة أو في وزارة التعليم في الإشراف للغة الإنجليزية ونحن حقيقة نعجز دائما على نسعد ونتشرف دائما برعاية مثل هذه التظاهرة ونتوقع إن شاء الله والمرة الرابعة على التوالي أن تكون هذه هذا الملتقى له توصيات وأعمال كبيرة جدا تطبيقية تنعكس على الميدان في الفترة القادمة شكرا لحضوركم وشكرا للجميع ونتمنى بإذن الله عز وجل نراكم في لقاءات وملتقيات قادمة وهو ما تسعد به شركة تطوير خدمات التعليمية السلام عليكم Hello everybody, peace be upon you all. My name is Ala Yasin Ansari, and I'm a 16 years old student from Arafat Secondary School. I am an enthusiastic pioneering Saudi young man who represents the new male generation in my country. I know it's my duty to work hard to make the 2030 vision come to reality. I will focus and plan accordingly to achieve it. I will challenge and compete with others, but not to win, to make our lives better and more inspiring for others. I will accept others with all their differences and will mingle with other cultures because I know that keeping an open mind makes me more approachable and easier to deal with. My love to my country is a great source of inspiration that drives me towards success and great accomplishments. Finally, I'm very proud to be part of 2030 Vision. Thank you for watching. Hi everyone, my name is Elhanof Dazal Asaymi. I'm 18 years old and I study at Jeddah Gifted Secondary School. I'm an ambitious young Saudi lady representing the new generation in my country. I have the determination to achieve success 
and become a productive member in my society. Being aware of the new prospects of my country, I am willing to work hard to make the future even brighter for the Saudi youth. I will observe the world around us, wisely select what is the best for my country, and make sound decisions. I will be honest in my duty, as honesty displays dedication and increases productivity, which leads to strong economy and financial stability. For me, the sky is the limit, and I will not allow anything to break down my confidence, and nothing will prevent me from achieving success. Finally, I am very proud to be part of the 2030 vision. Thank you for watching. Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Hanaf al -Asami. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I am Ala. You know, Ala, while I was searching information for my English class project, I came across a poem for the famous English poet, Rudyard Kepling, that says, but there is neither east nor west, border nor brief, nor birth, when two strong men stand face to face though they come from the ends of the earth. Such powerful words, don't you think, Ala? Yes, indeed, and very profound meanings as well. You know, it reminds me of our kingdom. Today, I think that Saudi Arabia is writing its own poem, one where one of these two strong men is in fact a strong rising nation with a vision to the future, standing on a solid base of Islamic teachings and holding high the mighty pen of English language. English? What is the role of English in all of this? To answer you, al Hanof, let me take you to the very beginning. Saudi Arabia realized the global market challenges as early as 1925 and took action to develop English as a foreign language by introducing it to the Saudi curriculum. I remember reading something about this in our school magazine. It also talked about something called uh, the Kingdom's Policy of Education. Have you ever read about this? I sure have. It reflects on the government's early realization of the importance of the English language to the overall development of education's quality in the country. 
Uh, I, I do remember our English teacher telling us that the Ministry of Education is seeking to develop the general and the basic skills to enable us to face modern life requirements. In other words, you are saying that the English language will be one of the vessels to carry us the youth towards the Kingdom's 2030 vision. That's right. We all aspire to achieve the goals of this vision. It is a plan that outlines long-term goals to utilize the country's assists for future generations. And we are the young generation, and we have been given priority in this vision. Do you know that this vision is a package of social and economic policies that are designed to free the kingdom from the dependence on oil and help it build a prosperous and sustainable economic future? I do know. I also know that learning English is a part of 2030 vision. We are lucky that our kingdom provides us with free education. Therefore, we should realize our responsibilities towards our country, and we must hold ourselves accountable for the success of its vision. Speaking of education, a friend of mine is interested in Korean. He once asked the teacher during the class, hmm, why don't we study Korean in school? Because English is a global language. It is spoken worldwide. Can you believe it is the official language of 101 countries? It is spoken by one billion people. This is an answer to your friend's question. I know. I did tell him that. I also told him that English is the language of science and research, and it's the language of uh, the media industry, the internet, TV, books, and journals. Add to that, please. Learning English will make our country more desirable for global markets and international investments. Very true. And don't forget that mastering the English language will provide us access to the best universities of the world. By the way, I remember you told me your sister is an English teacher, right? What do you know about English language teaching in light of Division 2030? That's a very good question indeed. And the answer is very simple. The Ministry of Education is improving teaching practices that focus on the learner's skills, personality development, and creativity. Wow, that's hugely promising. What else can you tell us? Oh, let us see. I also know that the Ministry of Education is providing online learning options for us, the students, and encouraging more parental, more parental inv involvement in the teaching and learning process. This is awesome. I'm confident that this vision will be easily achievable if we, the young Saudis, start looking at things around us in different ways and with different perspectives. A bright future awaits us, but hard work is a must. We need to embrace change because we are the driving force that can make the vision happen by changing our working and learning habits as, as well as attitudes to better ones. That's why learning English has become a necessity so we can have a better communication with different countries and different races. And to be identities as members of the new world, we as Saudis should be, should be equipped with the currency to do so in all fields. Our beloved country deserves all of our dedication, men and women, young and old, civilians and servicemen. We must work hand in hand under one shared vision to make it a force to be reckoned with among the world's leading nations. Thank, Thank you for, you for listening. listening. The following is the patron speech, Mr. Abdullah Thigafi, delivered by Mr. Yahya Al Gahtani, the assistant of the General Director for Educational Affairs. Uh, 
الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السيدات والسادة أصحاب السعادة الحضور الكريم المتحدثون السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جدة ببحرها ومطرها وبكم أنتم مصدر السعادة لدينا نحرص جميعا على تجويد مخرجات أبنائنا الطلاب وبناتنا الطالبات في كافة المهارات والمعارف العلمية والتعليمية ولكون التعبير عن المعارف وإبراز المهارات والتزود بها وصقلها لا يكون إلا عن طريق اللغة فبها يكون التعبير وبها تكون القراءة وبتدوينها يتم, يتم نقل المعارف من جيل إلى جيل لذا كان لزاما أن نهتم بتدريسها وتجويدا وتنمية لها وجعلها أداة العلم فهي بالإضافة إلى ذلك هوية المجتمعات وأداة إبراز ثقافتها واليوم وقد أصبح العالم قرية صغيرة منفتحة لا مسافات ولا حواجز بين الثقافات والمجتمعات ولكون اللغة الإنجليزية هي اللغة العالمية التي يتواصل, التي يتواصل بها رسميا العالم بأسره جعلت الوزارة نصب عينها الاهتمام بها وبناء البرامج التي تسهم في إتقان أبنائنا وبناتنا الطلاب والطالبات لها قراءة وكتابة وتحدثا لتكون أداتهم المعينة للاطلاع على كل جديد في العالم والمشاركة فيه تلبية لمهارات القرن الحادي والعشرين ختاما لجميع الزملاء والزميلات في الوزارة وفي إدارة تعليم جدة خالص الشكر والتقدير شكرا لكم أنتم على حضوركم شكرا شركة تطوير شكرا لليو بي تي شكرا لأبنائي وبناتي المشاركين في هذا اللقاء والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Distinguished listeners, now it's time to honor the official sponsor and the people who worked hard for, for the success of HELD conference. One, Dr. Muhammad al Sayed, the, the manager of content and standards, Tatwaya for Education. Mr. Abdurrahman al Freh, Head of English Language, Minister of Education. <laughs> Dr. Ayman Maghrabi, UBT Academy. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Saleh Al Garni, head of English language department, Jera, ELDJ. Mr. Yasser Al Hausawi, teacher at Arafat Secondary School. Ala Yasser Al Ansari, soon at Arafat Secondary School. Now, Her Excellency Mrs. Saad Al Mansour, the Assistant of the General Director for Education for Educational Affairs for Girls, honoring the girls section. Mrs. Nahla Taj, English Language Supervisor. Ms. Khulud Al Madani, teacher at Jeddah Gifted School. Al Hanouf Al Usami, student at Jeddah Gifted School. Now, it's time to honor the patron of the conference, His Excellency Mr. Abdullah Thagafi, the General Director of Education in Jeddah, received by His Excellency Mr. Yahya Al Gahtani, the Assistant of the General Director for Educational Affairs. Thank you and welcome to Jeddah. I think we had a great start to the conference. Thank you all for being here. And uh, I'm going to start my talk about health, heads of English language. Uh, department ne as an access, as an access for teaching and learning English in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Now, what do I mean by this? And what's nexus? And how does it fit within your roles at head as heads of English language departments in Saudi Arabia? If you look at Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia is a huge country. And in the ministry headquarters, we, uh, then we have 47 education directorates. We have two sectors, boys and girls. Your role as head of English is very important. Seriously, it's very, very important. And we're going to talk about some of the things that you have done and led to achieving, achieving success in so many things. So let's start. Now, as you know, the theme of this conference is 21st century skills. And I came about this slide or this image. And I, try, and I looked at it for a very, very long time. I look at the first thing, I see a happy student coming to school. Then I see teachers trying to feed him the books or feed him the knowledge. As many knowledge as he could get, cramming him 
to the maximum. And at the end, I'm sorry for the image at the end. And then comes the test. And what happened afterwards? He throws everything on the paper. And he leaves, and everyone is clapping because he got a certificate. But look at his face. Doesn't look like a happy face. So, the question is, do we do something like this in our schools? No, that's a question, I'll leave it for you. It's, a, it's something that I look out for a very long time. And I have my own ideas about it, but it could be true. It could be true. The Self Magazine. And I believe each one of you now has a printed copy of the Self Magazine about the criteria for submitting an article to the, for the Self Magazine. Now, you, you have a, a printed copy, and now we have a website, and we want to show the world what English language teaching in Saudi Arabia is all about. So, the ELDB project, English Language Professional Development Project, a project that has been going on for over five years, phase one, phase two, phase three, one of the most successful projects that we had with English language teaching, reaching over 30,000, training over 30,000 teachers all around the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, face to face. The online programs with EF and National Geographic Learning, huge success worldwide. We've never had a success with online programs that you reach 91% completion. This has never happened before. 91% completion rate in an online program. This requires 21st century skills. Some people talk about the four C's, some people talk about the seven C's, but, so, critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, communication, and under communication, you could add digital literacy and uh, self-directed problem solving, all these things. So, the focus should be on the skills. If you remember my first slide about the child going to the classroom or to the school where the teachers are cramming him with knowledge, knowledge, and at the end, he just, it's like a bank. You just deposit some money, and at the end you withdraw this money and that's it, nothing is left. So, when Bloom talked about his, uh, his taxonomy, so, he started from remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. So where does 21st century skills, where do we find them? So let's look at the first three, remembering, understanding, and applying. So this is all about comprehension. And then we have evaluating, which, and analyzing, and this falls under critical thinking. Creating is under creativity. So when we talk about 21st century skills, we're talking about, about higher order thinking skills. Things that comes from analyzing, evaluating, and creating. If you haven't heard of this guy, this is Jeremy Harmer. Now Jeremy Harmer is a like, is an icon in English language teaching. He, print, he has published this highly acclaimed book, The Practice of English Language Teaching. Now, this book, I recommend each one of you to buy this book. It's a really good book. And. Salam alaikum to everybody. Uh, my name is Jeremy Harmer, and I'm speaking to you from Dubai, uh, where we've just had a wonderful uh, meeting with teachers from the region, from Saudi, from the Emirates, from Kuwait, from. Uh, Bahrain, uh, and I want to give, extend my welcome to you for your, your conference on 21st century skills in English language teaching in Jeddah. Uh, there you all are in Jeddah. I hope you have a wonderful conference. I think the title of your conference is really important because uh, 
when I started English teaching, and as you can tell from looking at me, this was a long time ago, it was a very different world. And what we did in the classroom uh, had different concerns and, and, and different uh, focuses, if you like. But the world has moved on since then, and the 21st century is a very different place to be. And to be an English teacher now, these days, uh, involves us in training students for a whole set of skills which we didn't necessarily think were important way back when I started. So uh, I wish you the, the, the best of luck in investigating those skills. How do we move away from teaching students just facts about language to teaching them how to, how to exist in the modern world of, of, of English, in the modern world of English for employment, in the modern world of digitally connected humanity. This is a really big challenge and the challenge is for all of us, uh, not just in the world of English language teaching, but in all of our lives. But for you, for me, for us, it's a really big challenge in English language teaching. And that's the challenge you're going to be discussing. I wish I could be there with you. I'm there in spirit, but not in person. Uh, inshallah, I'll be there uh, one day uh, in, in the future. Have a great conference. Um, I'm longing to hear how you got on. Thank you very much. Now, this guy, along with Pearson Education, did something more. It's called the GSC. This guy is called Mike Mayer. And also, Mike Mayer would like to say a few words to you, Chairman. Hi, I'm Mike Mayer. I'm director for the Global Scale of English at Pearson. I'm really happy to have this opportunity to uh, say greetings to all the Saudi educators in the room. I hope you're going to have a great conference. Um, I know the conference is going to focus on 21st century skills, which is a subject very close to my heart at the moment. I've been doing a lot of research into uh, the skills that employers are looking for in those students that you're training at the moment. Um, and I think English language teachers in particular are in a really strong position to train your students for the future because as much as employers value knowledge, what they are also looking for are the 21st century skills. So they want learners who can demonstrate critical thinking, can work in teams, can be creative. And this is fundamentally what you are able to do as a language teacher. You're, you're training your students in so many more skills than just English language, as long as you make sure that your lessons are not too teacher-centered. So in order to learn a language, it's very much has to come from the learner. So even though I know it's difficult in many cultures, you have to try to put the emphasis on the learner and the learner learning by doing, by participating. So I think it's a great future for English language teachers and I hope you all have a wonderful conference. What did you want to be when you grow up? Now that's a question that we ask our students or we ask our students in the past. So that was like one of the traditional answers. A doctor, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a teacher, I want to be an engineer. So those are the traditional answers. But bear in mind, when you were young, have you said that in the future, I would like to be an app developer? No one, no one said that I would be an app developer. Or I would like to be a blogger, no? An offshore wind farm engineer, no? A drone operator, no? A sustainability director. These, are, these jobs didn't exist at that time. So what kind of knowledge are we talking about that doesn't have these things? So what are we gonna do with these things? So should be worried. Now this is very, very interesting. It says here by the UNESCO World Bank in 2015, 65% of today's 12 year olds 
will do jobs that don't yet exist. So 65%. So imagine a 12 year old in the future, he will have a job that doesn't exist. In the past we didn't have sustainability directors, we didn't have drone operators and so on. So think about the future. So how do we get a job that doesn't exist? So farewell to job titles and hello to skill set. Hello to skill set. Thank you very much. يأتي الملتقى التاسع لرؤساء ورئيسة أقسام اللغة الإنجليزية بالمملكة امتدادا لسابقتها من الملتقيات. موضوع هذا الملتقى هو مهارات القرن الواحد والعشرين اللازمة لتعلم اللغة الإنجليزية. موضوع حيوي وموضوع مهم وموضوع مفصلي في طريقة تدريسنا للغة الإنجليزية في المستقبل. تدريس اللغة الإنجليزية يجب أن ينطلق من التركيز على المهارات. مهارات القرن الواحد والعشرين أو مهارات المستقبل تتلخص في التفكير الإبداعي، التفكير الناقد، العمل في المجموعات وفرق العمل والفرق والعمل الجماعي والعمل التشاركي. أشكر جميع المنظمين في تعليم جدة على هذا الملتقى وبإذن الله يحقق الأعمال المشهودة. شكرا لكم. Good morning everyone. Actually we are honored to have uh, this event in Jeddah. Uh, this is a very uh, special event uh, attended by um, speakers from all around the world, from the head of English language department in Saudi Arabia. I'd like to thank Tatweer for educational services for uh, their sponsoring this event. Uh, also, I'd like to thank uh, our dear teachers and students from Jeddah for their active participate in this event. Finally, uh, we did our best in preparing uh, for this event and we hope that uh, everybody who came here to Jeddah enjoyed uh, the event and we hope actually that we did uh, a, good, a good job in this event. Convened in Jeddah. Today we have the great fortune of having three of the most respected and professional speakers in the field of English language. Our first speaker is Professor Patrick Griffin, who will be discussing language competence. Prof. Patrick is from the University of Melbourne. He was the director of the Assessment Research Center at the Melbourne Graduate School of Study Education for 26 years. He has published more than 30 books on competency development, English language proficiency, literacy and numeracy and online assessment. He is currently leading the Kifayat project. Dear audience, let's welcome Professor Patrick. Salam alaikum. Is that working? Yeah, it's working. Good. Uh, thank you for <laughs> inviting me to speak at this conference and uh, for the opportunity. I hope that what I present is not too confusing, uh, but uh, it could well be. I'm going to be presenting on some research that we've conducted on the language, spoken language proficiency and its assessment. The assessment of spoken language has been notoriously difficult. I spent some years, many years ago, working on the development of the IELTS test, the uh, opposition to TOEFL. And uh, when we get to the higher proficiency levels, it becomes very difficult to measure a person's ability in spoken language. So what I've done is I'm not... So, Basically, the students are presented with a set of diagrams or, or graphics and asked to comment on them. I won't go through the whole test because it, it takes a while. But the structure of the test is such that we have written, developed a formulaic approach so that the content of the test items could be varied depending upon the context in which it was 
So this is basically describing personal characteristics. I can say that it is a small TESOL for, you know, English teachers. Um, yes, it, 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 it is three days, but actually uh, the information and the people whom Gaho gathering from four countries, from New Zealand, Australia, United States and the United Kingdom, they give a lot of information for, for, for our head department in order to develop their levels in English and in order to, to, to develop themselves and in order to develop the people who train for. And thank you for uh, Tatwir, thank you for uh, the, the, the head English department in Jeddah and the people uh, who work with the English department in Jeddah education. Uh, it's an honor for me to attend this conference, a conference about how to introduce the 21st century in, in, in teaching English language. It is the first conference where we have uh, different speakers from all over the world gather in one venue to talk about their work in 21st skills. Uh, what we have seen so far from early morning, what have presented by Mr. Abdulham Freyh, and by that, Dr. Patrick, and by the third guy from Singate, it's something magnificent and wonderful. Uh, all I can say, I wish all my colleagues, uh, they benefit from this conference and they find it as, it's, as it has been planned. And I do thank Jeddah Education Directorate for organizing such a wonderful event. Speaker is Mr. Alexander Warren, who will be speaking on thinking outside the box. Alex is a Delta trainer with over 15 years experience of working ELT as a teacher, academic director, and teacher trainer. He is a firm believer in a communicative approach to language learning and student-centered learning. Alex enjoy, enjoys working with innovative, thought-provoking materials and presenting on a wide range of ELT-related topics. Respected audience, let's welcome Mr. Alex. Good morning, salam alaikum. How are you all? Feeling good? Hopefully slightly better than myself. So I apologize now, I'm a bit croaky. I've kind of bought some illness from the UK and apparently the terrible weather as well. So I apologize. Um, so this session, we're gonna be talking all about creative thinking. And let's just get a PowerPoint up and ready. Perfect, we good to go? There we go. So yeah, developing cre uh, creative thinking or creative and innovative 21st century thinkers, because as, as Mr. Abdul Rahman mentioned earlier, this is one of the key four 21st century skills that our learners need to have. It's the topic. Uh, it's uh, English for the 21st uh, for the 21st century. Um, it's it concentrates mainly on the product rather than the uh, you know the the uh, what is being presented. It, you know, um, when we talk about English for the 21st century, then we are talking about uh, equipping the, or, or enabling the student, the learner, uh, to deal with what is being expected next century, uh, during this century. Okay, when we talk about the 21st century skills, it means that we are focusing on skills that enable the learner uh, to be um, ready for the market. I mean, uh, ready to take place into the future and to be an, an, a productive member of the society itself. You know, we're not thinking about jobs that we are familiar with right now but we are uh, you know f like foreseeing what is happening during the uh, coming years. I'm very glad to be here with my friend in uh, all over Saudi Arabia. In fact the, this meeting is very useful for us as supervisors and it will be very useful for our English teachers. I, I'm really thanking all the people who arrange this uh, meeting uh, for, uh, either from the Ministry of Education or from uh, Jeddah General Directorate of Education. Hello, welcome back. 
Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here this afternoon. My name is Saud Shehri. I'm going to be your moderator for the next session, at least. Um, uh, let me draw your attention that we can receive your questions uh, for the Q&A session uh, uh, via the website. So if you have any question, please pose your question on that website so we can read them later on. Um, now without hesitation, let me introduce the speakers. I'm delighted to present the first speaker for today, Dr. Richard Churches. He's a lead advisor for education reform and evidence-based practice at Education Development Trust. He has led many major large-scale government policy initiatives in England and across the world. Today, he's going to give his expert opinion about the potential of teacher-led randomized control trials to advance 21st century skills in English language learning. I kindly ask for your full attention, and please help me to welcome Dr. Ratchet. Thank you. Shukran. Shukran. Masa Khair. I am Henna Kamein. Ismay Richard Churches. I am in Britannia and Englezi. That's enough of my Arabic for today because it's an English language conference and it really is a great pleasure to be with you today. The now for about 10 minutes about a project that illustrates what's possible in this world. And we call the project Neuroscience Informed teacher led randomized control trial and it illustrates the potential of practitioners doing the studies for themselves. It's funded by the Wellcome Trust and we found teachers that have previously done a randomized control trial because we've been doing this for quite a while, about 345 teachers have been trained to do randomized control trials. I used to know how many there have been but I've lost count in the last five years now so I couldn't tell you. Um, and they came together with neuroscientists to look at the latest evidence from cognitive neuroscience psychology. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome back again. Um, now we will start with uh, the second speaker for today, or for this session, Mr. Maxim Rayman. He's a business development manager for British Council exam. He has a BA with an honorary degree in literature and philosophy and much more. Please welcome him. He's going to talk about setting the standards for success. Please help me to welcome Mr. Maxim. And thank you for having me here today. Uh, I think I'm a bit short for this microphone. So let's start with a quotation with one word missing. Begin with the something in mind. Any ideas? Begin with the end in mind. Thank you very much. Yes, begin with the end in mind. Um, the second recommended habit in this book by Stephen Covey is begin with the end in mind for highly effective people. And we're talking here about highly effective teachers. So for teachers, what is the end we have in mind? And for teachers of 21st century skills, what are the ends we have in mind? Well, if we look at the different tools we use for teaching and the different systems we use, we have a curriculum. The curriculum is both the start and the end. The curriculum standards are what we're trying to achieve. And the next step is to look at how we assess our teaching to meet those standards. And finally, we plan and teach our lessons to give our students the tools and the practice to meet those standards. Now, I think today we've already heard about the four C's, so there's no need for me to uh, ask you to guess. Communication, written and oral, collaboration, creativity and imagination, critical thinking and problem solving. The, the learning skills that we can apply in the English language classroom, the 21st century skills, 
that we need our students to be adopting to make them more effective in the future. very happy really for attend and participate this conference in Jeddah province. One of the most important things that I want to mention is the arrangement of this conference. Uh, the materials here are very important and very useful. Thank you for Jeddah province and thank you for education in Jeddah. Being at this conference is a great opportunity to meet my colleagues, change, uh, exchange experiences. Uh, such conference or such meeting enhance the enhance the uh, uh, participant with many uh, skills. Also refresh uh, their knowledge about what's coming and what's built uh, at the ministry. I thought the conference began brilliantly. The young people who spoke at first were sensational in their excellence. Very articulate very wise and very, very well advanced for their years. Saudi Arabia can be very proud of its young people, but these are evidence of that kind of work that they can do. I also thought that Dr. Ruckman's closing comment in his opening speech was, was superb. He said, it's time to say goodbye to job titles. It's time to say hello to skill sets. So now I have to talk about 21st century skill sets that enable people to be flexible, to be employable, to take a lead in the change of society that's needed. I think the presentations and the collection of people that the conference has brought together is also very, very good. I'm sure we're going to learn a lot about 21st century skills about the importance of language in those skills and about reporting to emphasize the skills but not the scores, to emphasize the development, not the deficits. That our work needs to be evidence-driven, not inference. So we need to be talking about what people do, say, make and write in English to be able to be sure that they can participate in an economy that's shifting, in a society that's changing, and to be like the young students that we saw this morning at the opening session, the opening ceremony. It was a superb performance by those young people, and Saudi Arabia should be very proud of them. Uh, I would say that uh, the conference is off to a flying start, and I was looking at the program uh, last week and I am impressed by the number of people and the qualifications and experience of the people who would be presenting at this conference and talking about how we can move education forward in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, I would like to say thank you to the organizers and it would be too long and I might miss somebody while mentioning every name so please accept my gratitude and thanks. Uh, to every person who has worked very hard to make this conference, three-day conference, an absolute success. I mean, it's still the first day in the morning, but we can already tell uh, by the participants, by the people presenting, how wonderful this is going to be over the next few days. Uh, we are from the Center of English for English Language at the Ministry of Education, and we are working closely to collaborate with every department and to hopefully uh, bring to, to, uh, to, to a fruitful co uh, conclusion all the things that need to be done. It's a long road ahead. Uh, it cannot be done in one day or two days, but because of great and amazing people that we have met and worked with, we know it's going to be a complete success. It's a great pleasure and honor to be here at the ninth Heads of English Language Departments Conference in the wonderful city of Jeddah. 
I'd like to thank the Education Directorate in Jeddah and in particular the English Supervision Department in Jeddah for their organisation and wonderful first day of the conference. It's always a pleasure to hear the students in Jeddah talk and this year they didn't let us down. They got up and they talked about the needs and the, their wants and their future dreams and how they are connected to the Saudi Vision 2030 and how English language will influence their futures. It's extremely well organised as, as always and I'm sure as in the introduction to the conference it said a lot of change, a lot of instigation and a lot of initiatives get developed and implemented to improve teaching and learning of English throughout the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia through these symposiums and conferences. I look forward to working with my colleagues both at Tatweer and the Ministry of Education to improve the teaching of learning and English in the Great Kingdom of Saudi Arabia further on its road to 2030. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank you for the opportunity to live and work and contribute in your wonderful country. And thank you to my friends and colleagues in Jeddah for their help in organizing this wonderful event. I'm here in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia at the 9th Head of English Language Department Conference. Uh, it's my first visit here and it's been thoroughly hospitable and a really great welcome. The conference itself has been immaculately organised. It's got a great array of speakers and I'm looking forward to the rest of the conference. I've just finished my session, which is on creativity in the English language classroom. Uh, we were exploring this key 21st century skill in line with the theme of the conference and showing how we can inspire not just students, but teachers to be more creative in the classroom, in how they're teaching, but in also how they're using the language. Because creativity, like I said, is, is a key 21st century skill, and one which may not get the same attention as critical thinking and communication. Um, but it's a really highly valued skill for employers looking to the future, and, and one that students need to be able to have to contribute to the future of society. Um, so thank you very much. On behalf of Amit East and ETS, uh, the makers of TOEFL, we would like to uh, thank the ninth Annual Heads of English uh, Language for hosting us and for having the opportunity to come together and meet. We so far have been very impressed and very happy with uh, everyone that has been presenting and we look forward to networking and creating a stronger sense of community for English. So um, again, from Amity East, we thank everyone who has uh, come out and um, we want to thank you again for allowing us the opportunity to meet with all of you. So thank you very much. I'm here today speaking at this very exciting global conference that's been organized in Jeddah for English language supervisors and a number of experts are speaking from around the world about some very exciting and important topics. Myself, I'm speaking about how teachers and supervisors can conduct their own randomized control trials, paralleling what, paralleling what happens in medicine and healthcare in order to find out what happens best with which children in which situation. And it's been great to hear the enthusiasm from delegates here at this amazing conference. Uh, this conference is a great opportunity for all teachers in, um, in uh, the Kingdom to get together and share ideas and best practices. Um, today uh, I delivered a presentation on uh, the learning uh, oriented assessment and how it can be incorporated uh, in the classroom. Uh, I think it's obvious that there are fundamental changes taking place to, um, um, to the learning process and the teaching practices and the culture in general related to education in, uh, in the Kingdom of, of uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, which is something that basically we're always welcome and we always support. Um, our concept related to learning oriented assessment is really to um, make learning part of the well, to, to make assessment part of the learning process and make sure that basically it's used, it's used in the most effective way possible. Um, conferences like these are always crucial for the development of teachers, not only because they expose them to new ideas and new proposals and new thoughts, but also because they share 
these best practices and they, it's like um, 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 a contagious effect where best practices are moved um, along the chains from one school to another, from one person to another. Uh, so once again, um, we are very proud to be here and we are very supportive of the movement of the, 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 basically the, uh, the, ministry, the, the ministry is taking forward related to the development of the, um, English language uh, teaching in the Kingdom um, and we hope to see more, uh, more of these events as well coming up in the near future. Thank you very much for this opportunity and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. And I've come to this conference to talk about uh, critical thinking and academic writing. Uh, my years of experience in this region made me realize that there's a, um, a lack of critical thinking in the students that are coming through to university and college. They don't just have problems with the language, but also thinking in a critical way. So this is what the theme of my talk was about. Uh, how can we teach critical thinking to, um, to the students? And I had a number of suggestions, um, a lot of activities that we can use in the classroom to promote uh, critical thinking. Things like, for example, um, problem solving, uh, brainstorming, um, looking at advertisements and asking questions about them in a critical way, and uh, also some other um, activities as well. So that was my main um, purpose in coming to the conference. I've enjoyed it very much. It's a very well organized, very well run conference and I look forward to coming back to uh, conferences in the future. Hey, um, my experiences of the conference have been that it's been a, a really diverse uh, range of topics so just this morning we've talked about or well, we've heard from speakers talking about um, different ways of testing students. We've talked about um, creativity in the classroom and then we're just listening to someone talking about methods of educational research and that, that's just in one morning so I'm looking forward to what else will happen over the next few days as well. Uh, my own topic is really looking at um, English for academic purposes so teaching students who are looking to study uh, in, in an English medium of instruction environment or are already students in an English speaking university and, and possibly moving beyond the idea of, of skills as being sort of discrete things which can be taught and looking at the idea of, of knowledge as a whole thing and that being at university is about understanding what knowledge is, creating new forms of knowledge and communicating that knowledge to other people so that would be the focus of my talk and, and what the challenges are in that and some practical suggestions about how to address those challenges. <laughs>